Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at a subject that has quietly begun to draw attention among defense analysts, military planners, and aviation experts. The future Israeli sixth generation fighter jet concept. What is actually known so far, and what can reasonably be inferred from Israel's past behavior, current programs, and strategic environment. This is not a story about secret super weapons or dramatic leaks. There has been no official unveiling, no glossy prototype, and no confirmed aircraft name. Instead, this is an examination of signals, policy choices, industrial capabilities, and strategic needs. In other words, how Israel usually approaches air power, why a sixth generation concept matters to it, and what shape such a program would realistically take if and when it emerges. Israel's modern military history is inseparable from air power. From the earliest days of the state, control of the air has been treated not as an advantage, but as a necessity. Israel does not have strategic depth. Its major population centers, air bases, and industrial areas are all within relatively short range of potential adversaries. This geographic reality has shaped every major defense decision the country has made, especially in aviation. The Israeli Air Force, formerly known as the Israeli Air Force, has consistently prioritized early adoption, rapid integration, and deep modification of aircraft S. Israel has rarely built its combat aircraft entirely from scratch in recent decades, but it has become one of the world's most sophisticated modifiers and integrators of advanced fighters. This background is essential to understanding how Israel might approach a sixth generation fighter concept. At present, sixth generation fighters are not a single universally defined category. Unlike F, if generation aircraft, which are commonly understood to emphasize stealth shaping, sensor fusion, and low observable materials, sixth generation concepts vary by country. The United States, Europe, and Asia all describe somewhat different priorities, though certain themes appear consistently. These include greater integration with unmanned systems, enhanced networking, improved electronic warfa, redominance, longer operational reach, and adaptability against future air defense systems. Israel has not publicly announced a standalone sixth generation fighter program. That absence is important. Historically, when Israel intends to pursue a fully indigenous combat aircraft, it signals that ambition relatively clearly. The lobby program of the 1980s, for example, was openly discussed before I. T was ultimately canceled due to cost and political pressures. The silence around a sixth generation jet suggests that if Israel is planning such a capability, it is likely doing so in a more indirect or modular way. To understand why, it helps to look at Israel's current frontline aircraft. The backbone of Israel's future air combat capability is the F-35I Adir, a customized version of the AME, Rikin F-35. While the base aircraft is developed and produced by the United States, Israel has been granted an unusually high level of freedom to integrate its own avionics, electronic warfare systems, and software. This arrangement is rare and reflects both Israel's technical capabilities and its unique security requirements. Rather than seeing the F-35 as a finished product, Israel treats it as a platform. The aircraft is continuously upgraded with local systems designed to address regional threats, particularly advanced surface-to-air missiles, electronic warfare environments, and long-range strike missions. From Israel's perspective, the distinction between fifth and sixth generation capabilities is therefore less rigid than it might be elsewhere. When analysts talk about an Israeli sixth generation fighter concept, they are often referring not to a single new airframe, but to an ecosystem. This ecosystem would likely combine manned aircraft, unmanned systems, advanced sensors, 
artificial intelligence assisted decision support and deep integration with space and cyber capabilities. Israel already invests heavily in all of these areas independently, one of the most consistent. T patterns in Israeli defense planning is the emphasis on early intelligence, early detection, and early action. Israel prefers to identify threats before they fully materialize and to maintain the ability to strike them at long range if necessary. This strategic preference strongly influences what a future fighter concept would prioritize. Range, for example, is a critical issue. Potential future. Key conflicts involving Israel could involve targets far beyond its immediate borders, including hardened facilities, mobile missile units, and well-defended command nodes. A sixth-generation concept, from Israel's perspective, would need to operate effectively at extended ranges while remaining survivable in dense air defense environments. Stealth alone is not enough to guarantee survivability, Mo. Stern air defense systems are increasingly networked, multispectral, and adaptive. Israel has long focused on electronic warfare as a core competency, and this focus is likely to intensify rather than diminish. Any future fighter concept would almost certainly place electronic attack, deception, and spectrum dominance on equal footing with traditional kinetic weapons. Another key feature, often as associated with sixth generation fighters, is the use of unmanned wingmen, sometimes referred to as loyal wingman systems. These are smaller, unmanned aircraft that operate alongside a manned fighter, extending its sensor reach, carrying additional weapons, or acting as decoys. Israel is already a global leader in unmanned aerial systems with decades of operational experience. Given this background, it is reasonable to expect that Israel's approach to sixth generation capabilities would lean heavily on unmanned integration rather than a dramatic leap to an entirely new manned aircraft. A future Israeli fighter might act as a command node, coordinating multiple unmanned systems rather than operating as a standalone platform. This approach aligns with Israel's industrial realities. Developing key clean sheet sixth generation fighter from scratch would require enormous financial and political investment. Israel's defense budget, while substantial for its size, is not unlimited. Historically, Israel has achieved disproportionate capability by focusing on software, electronics, and system integration rather than on expensive airframe development. There is also the question of alliances. Israel's defense relationship with the United States remains central to its air power. Access to American technology, supply chains, and strategic support has been a cornerstone of Israeli security for decades. Any Israeli sixth generation concept would need to coexist with or be compatible with American systems rather than compete directly with them. This does not mean Israel would simply wait. For the United States to deliver a finished sixth generation aircraft. Instead, Israel is likely to pursue a hybrid path, influencing allied programs, integrating unique national capabilities, and ensuring that its version of any future aircraft meets its specific operational needs. Another factor shaping Israel's thinking is the rapid evolution of regional threats. Adversaries are investing in P. Recision guided missiles, drones, cyber warfare, and layered air defenses. The air domain is becoming more contested, not less. A future fighter must therefore operate as part of a broader joint force rather than as a lone spearhead. This is where data fusion and command and control become critical. A sixth generation concept is as much about information management as it is about speed or maneuver. Israel has long emphasized real-time intelligence sharing across services, and this emphasis is likely to deepen. In practical terms, this could mean a fighter that seamlessly integrates satellite data, ground-based sensors, cyber intelligence, and airborne. Early warning into a single operational picture. The pilot's role would shift further toward decision-making and mission management. Rather than manual control of every system, 
training, and human factors also matter. Israel places significant emphasis on pilot quality and training standards. Any future aircraft concept must support this philosophy, providing situational awareness and workload management that enhances, rather than replaces, human judgment. It is also worth noting what Israel is unlikely to pursue. There is lit. TLE evidence to suggest that Israel would prioritize extreme speed, such as sustained hypersonic flight, as a defining feature of a future fighter. Speed has value, but it also comes with trade-offs in cost, maintenance, and detectability. Israel's operational environment tends to favor precision, reliability, and survivability over raw performance metrics. Similarly, there is no indication that Israel would adopt unproven technologies simply for their novelty. Israeli defense planning is typically conservative in execution, even when innovative in concept. Systems are tested thoroughly, often under real operational conditions, before being fully integrated. As of now, official Israeli statements on sixth generation fighters remain cautious and gene. Raoul. Defense officials occasionally refer to future platforms or next-generation capabilities without specifying timelines or configurations. This ambiguity is likely intentional. Strategic ambiguity has long been a feature of Israeli security policy, particularly when it comes to capabilities that could alter regional power balances. From an industrial perspective, Israeli companies continue to invest heavily in sensors, electronic warfare, artificial intelligence, and unmanned systems. These investments provide strong clues about where future priorities lie. Rather than building a new fighter in isolation, Israel appears to be constructing the building blocks that could be assembled into a sixth generation capability when needed. International collaboration is another important LM. Israel maintains defense partnerships with multiple countries beyond the United States, particularly in technology development. While sensitive combat aircraft programs are closely guarded, subsystems and concepts often emerge through multinational cooperation. Timing is also a key question. Sixth-generation fighters are generally expected to enter service globally in the 2030s or later. ISR. AL does not face immediate pressure to field a new manned fighter before then, especially given the ongoing upgrades to its existing fleet. This allows Israel to observe, learn, and adapt rather than rush into a premature commitment. In summary, what we know about a future Israeli sixth-generation fighter concept is defined more by patterns and priorities than by confirmed specifications. Israel is unlikely to unveil a dramatic standalone aircraft in the near term. Instead, it is steadily developing the technologies and doctrines that would allow it to transition smoothly into a sixth generation operational environment. This approach reflects Israel's broader defense philosophy, pragmatic, adaptive, and focused on real world effectiveness rather than symbolic milestones. If and W. Hen, an Israeli sixth generation fighter, emerges, it will likely look less like a single revolutionary machine and more like the visible tip of a deeply integrated system of systems that has been evolving for years. The absence of official announcements should not be mistaken for a lack of preparation. On the contrary, Israel's history suggests that when capabilities do become visible, they are often already mature and operationally tested. For analysts and observers, the challenge is not to speculate wildly, but to watch carefully how existing platforms, technologies, and doctrines continue to evolve. That evolution, more than any leaked image or rumored specification, is where the real story of Israel's future air power can be found. If you found this analysis useful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more war updates and global analysis.